your opponents are outnumbering you, your warriors are weaker, and your teammates are inflaming out of their minds because you can't support them. If that is you, this video will follow you like a true warrior in any fight you go. <laughs> okay, 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 for real now. So, if you're one of the guys who just right click inside a field where you wanna fight in, or just right click a war chief and that's it, let me tell you this is wrong. The only reason why I won in this clip where I just right clicked the war chief is because I had a bigger army and Jotner. But if we would have the exact same army and I wouldn't have Jotner, I would have lost for sure. But what if you had a smaller army size or a weaker army? And what if I told you that you can win with that too? But before we dive into that, we need to understand some basics first. So there's three ways a fight can occur. In the opponent's base, in your own base, and in the middle of the field. If you fight in the opponent's base, the opponent has an advantage. He can fight with villagers and doesn't have such a long time to reinforce. If you fight in your own base, the same advantages appeal. And if you fight in the middle of the field... Wait, who does that? Isn't that just straight up dumb? Well, there's actually a lot of guys who do that, but in a different way. They fight in their own field, but without adding the villagers into the fight, which basically makes it the middle of the field. So please add the villagers into the fight. I see that so many times that players don't add that free damage in there, which can not only make you defend easier, but your counter attack will be much stronger after that. <laughs> and I say that while I'm obliterating someone who's defending himself with the villagers. I will tell you why I won after I explain to you another thing you need to know. So in this clip you can see two war chiefs who are fighting against each other in 1v1 and my war chief has 18 attack. And we can see that we need two hits for the first bar which is smaller for some reason and three hits for the normal bars. What means that we would have had to hit the war chief uh, 23 times with our war chief. What means that we would need 23 war chiefs to one shot his war chief or if we would calculate it we would need uh, 31 warriors who have 13 attack which is usually the case by one shotting i mean something similar to what you can see on this clip so that you just have to click once on the target and it's gone okay so now we know that we need 31 warriors to one shot a war chief Let's just keep that in mind and uh, look how these two warriors do, which are, by the way, more worth than a war chief. Because these two warriors combined cost uh, 45 gold and have 5 more attack points and 50 more health than the war chief by default. The only difference is that one warrior has 5 armor by himself. So we only need 8 hits with a war chief who has uh, 18 attack what would be an equivalent to 11 warriors who have 13 attack points. So with this information in mind, let's just imagine that we would attack someone who has uh, 10 warriors and one war chief and we would have 12 warriors. The only difference is that the enemy doesn't know what one shutting means and just right clicks into the field and lets his uh, warriors do whatever they want to. And here's what's gonna happen. Since the game automatically targets the most advanced enemy, his army would kill my first warrior and then randomly attack uh, between my warriors after that. What means that he needs a minimum of 11 hits to kill my warriors and if I click his warrior with my whole army individually, I can kill 11 warriors while he kills none of mine. And if I would have had focused his war chief first, I would have needed um, three hits with my whole army to kill him. That way I would lose three warriors of mine if you would know what one-shotting means. Which would lead to me not be able to one-shot his warriors anymore because I wouldn't have enough for that. And this is why we won in this clip for example. First of all I was using my villagers to defend. but they had way more army than we did and uh, I was just focusing those warriors one by one and we won. And if you have more than 11 warriors like 16 for example which is usually the case or even more you can split your army into groups 
with the combination of control and any number on your keyboard. I prefer to put my groups on 1 and 2 or 3 if the army is big enough and put my war chief on uh, 3 or 4. In a game with one teammate I like to do a group of 8s because he's doing damage as well and in larger groups I like to do 8 or a little bit less like 6 groups or something. So this allows you to one shot multiple warriors at once. Another thing you can do is to pull out the warriors which are targeted by the enemy and put them in back after that so they are not focused anymore. And if you combine pulling in your villagers, one-shotting and pulling out your warriors who are targeted, you will win most of the fights I'm sure. These were tips you can use while the fight is going on, but you can do a couple of things before the fight starts too. Like before going into an enemy field, you can pull your weaker um, warriors in the back and the more healthy one in the front. And the most optimal thing to do would be to pull in a shield bearer first. The problem with that is that the shield bearer would die instantly because um, when the shield bearer runs in, he's getting targeted by the whole army instantly while more than 50% of your army didn't go in yet. To avoid that 20% of your army dies before the, your whole army went into the field is to pull the enemy's army back by pulling them away with one warrior or one villager so that you gain uh, space in, on the entrance. I hope this helps you in some way and you learn something new. I'll see you in the next one.